This video will go over some basics of how to work with metal, including accurately locating and drilling holes, tapping or embedding screw threads in metal, and also illustrating how to use some essential tools. We're going to make a simple right angle bracket from quarter inch aluminum that will require two clearance holes and two tapped holes. First, we'll cut the aluminum to size using a hacksaw along with a square and a scribe to mark the cut line. Use the square to check the end of the bar stock for any burrs or off 90 degree cuts that would affect the accuracy of a measurement from that end. If needed, file the end and recheck with the square by holding it up to a light like so. Next, we'll measure off 2 inches from this end and make a mark with a scribe. A scribe is used to make layout lines in metal, and if there are already a lot of scratches, easily removable layout fluid can be used to help markings stand out. A sharpie works for small areas too and can easily be removed with alcohol. When marking off distances, make a V instead of a single line. A single line can be ambiguous as shown here. Use a hacksaw to make a slightly oversized cut that can then be accurately filed down to size. Apply pressure only on the forward stroke, as the back stroke doesn't cut and only dulls the blade. What type of blade should be used? A bimetal blade isn't the cheapest blade, but it will last longer and end up giving you a lower cost per cut over the cheaper carbon steel blades. Get enough teeth per inch so that at least three teeth are in contact with the material, and ideally six teeth. Deburr the edges using a deburring tool like this, or a file. Here are some filing tips. Apply pressure only in the forward direction, as the teeth won't cut in the opposite direction and you will actually dull the file. Now use a large file to bring the length to size and to square the end. Files come in many different shapes, styles, and coarsenesses. To remove material quickly, use a coarse double cut file like this. To create a smooth finish, use a smooth single cut file like this. Here you can see the difference in surface finish from each file. If the file gets clogged, it won't be able to cut. Use a stiff steel brush called a file card to clean it. To really polish a surface, hold the file horizontally. This is called draw filing. After the pieces have been cut to size, you can check their dimensions with a caliper. First, wipe the measuring surfaces with your thumb and make sure it reads zero when closed. Then gently close the jaws on the metal. Don't press too hard because this can cause the jaws to bend slightly and generate an erroneous reading. You can also use calipers to measure inside diameters and hold depths and steps like so. A technique for measuring the distance between two equally sized holes is to first measure a diameter, then zero the calipers and measure the largest distance between the holes. This will be the center to center distance since the reading is one diameter less than the actual distance. Now that the main pieces have been sized, we're going to mark the hole positions. One option is to use the square and scrab like this. Another option is to lock the caliper and use the tip of the jaw as a scribe. The key to accurately drilling holes in metal is making a starter mark with a center punch. If you try to drill the hole without this initial mark, the drill bit will likely walk or dance away from where you want it. If you look closely, the tip of a common drill bit isn't a point, but rather an edge, and you want this edge to fit inside the center punch mark. First make a light mark and then check its position. If it's off a little bit, you can correct by angling the punch slightly and striking again. If accuracy is more important, you can use something called a prick punch to make the first marking. A prick punch has a sharper angle that is easier to position. Using a scribe as a center punch will likely dull or break the tip, and won't leave a large enough mark. After prick punching, enlarge the mark with a center punch. You can also use an automatic center punch that has a spring-loaded striker built in, like this, to punch with only one hand and no hammer. When drilling small pieces, use a drill press clamp to hold the work. Even if it feels like you can hold the metal by hand at first, the danger is that the bit will grab as it breaks through the opposite side and become too hard to hold. Leave the vise free to move so that the drill bit will pull the assembly directly under itself. For larger pieces and holes 3 eighths of an inch or larger, you'll want to clamp the work directly to the drill press table. In this case, to locate the hole under the bit, bring the non-spinning bit down in contact with the center punch mark and watch to see if it bends to check alignment. Rotate the check 90 degrees and check again. Withdraw the quill slightly every once in a while to break the chips. This is called peck drilling. We're going to make holes for number 8 size screws, so we need two clearance holes that are slightly larger than the screw and two holes for tapping threads that are slightly smaller. You can look up these drill sizes here at curiousinventor.com slash drill sizes. One of the best uses of a caliper is checking screw diameters and drill bit sizes. Note that the shaft diameters of drill bits can be different than the cutting surface diameters. 
The best way to measure a drill bit is to gently apply pressure on the tip while slowly rotating it. The largest measurement will be the drill size. Note that many drills will cut a slightly larger hole than their diameter. Higher accuracy requires reaming with a tool like this. If drilling small holes, say under 3 eighths of an inch and only a couple diameters in depth, and if drilling in soft aluminum, you probably don't need any cutting fluid. But for deeper holes or ones in steel, add some cutting fluid like so. In general, the drill will need to go slower for steel than aluminum. Check out recommended drilling speeds here, curiousinventor.com slash drill speeds. As a rule of thumb, screws should go about one diameter deep in steel and two diameters for aluminum. Deeper than this and the screw or bolt will likely break before the threads strip out. Think about the thickness of a typical nut for comparison. Deburr the edges with a countersink bit or a larger drill bit. There are a couple different types of taps, taper, plug, and bottoming, and they differ by the amount of chamfer or slope at their tips. The first threads are what actually do the cutting, so a taper tap that has a chamfer over eight or more teeth cuts less with each tooth than a bottoming tap, which only cuts with one or two teeth. So, a taper tap is easier to turn and may be needed for extremely hard materials. The plug tap is most common and is usually all you need. Use a bottoming tap after a plug tap if you need threads to go all the way to the bottom of a blind hole. Begin by clamping the work securely. Add tapping fluid to each flute, like so. Place the tap in the hole, and while pressing down somewhat firmly and making sure that the tap is perpendicular to the part surface, make two full rotations. The most critical part of tapping a hole is starting straight. If only using your hands and a tapping wrench, check from two different directions that are 90 degrees apart as you make the first two turns to make sure that the tap is straight. You can also turn the drill press chuck by hand to get the tap started straight, or use a tapping block like so. After the tap is started, continue rotating a quarter turn forward and then a half turn backwards to break off chips. The goal is to keep the chips from clogging the tap and causing it to break. You may be able to make more than a quarter turn forward before backing off. Just be sure to stop turning if you feel a buildup of resistance. Taps are very brittle, so do everything you can to avoid bending them or applying too much torque. A broken tap can almost be impossible to remove and may end up destroying your work. Clean out the hole with compressed air, paper towels, or a drywall screw like this. Finally, assemble the bracket. For more tips, pictures, and to purchase some of the tools in this video, go to CuriousInventor.com metalworking.